Every believer has a voice, and it's the voice of victory. My God has made a way for me. Hello, everybody. I'm Kenneth Copeland. There's something I want to say to you today that that I've done for years, and so has Gloria. You remember Jesus said that, I'll just paraphrase it, don't worry about yesterday. It's over. Don't worry about tomorrow. It has trouble enough of its own. So what should we be saying? Today is my receiving day. Amen. I receive today. Amen. Yesterday's gone. I bless you for it, Lord, and I repent of the things <laughs> for which I need to repent. And in the name of Jesus, and I forgive. If I miss some there, I forgive if I have ought against any. But today's my receiving day, and I just forgive everybody today to start with. <laughs> because I, I'm through the day, I don't know yet, uh, that I'm, but I've known the devil for a long time. I've known him longer than I've known God. <laughs> And I know a lot about how he works. And unforgiveness is his key element. And judging people is a form of unforgiveness. Think about it like this. Uh, I, when I say, I like you, I just said, I want to be like you. I don't like you. I don't want to be like you. There's judgment in that. Mm. So it's just so easy. So just start the day off. I forgive. Mm -hmm. And today is my receiving day. Glory to God. Start it off Amen. properly. Amen. Now let's go to the book of Revelation. Yes. We started out on page one. In the beginning, God. <laughs> yes. And God, then the spirit of God was moving. Well, God, no beginning and no end. Well, it's His Spirit, no beginning and no end. That's beyond our ability to comprehend. And I've, and, but when we get to heaven, there's a lot of things that we will comprehend that because of some things that the Bible says that at that time, I'll just paraphrase, He's going to straighten out all of our doctrine and then he will praise us. I really had trouble with that, Greg, at first. But then I realized we've been through hell. Now, we've been really blessed in this country. But a lot of people have, have gone through a lot in this country. This, the, the prejudice and all of that is just demonic as it can get over color. It divides. And that's yes, what Satan does. It's the does. spirit of division it's what he to does. start with. Yep. And all of that, the apostle Paul wrote, wrote that and he used himself and Apollos as the example. <clears throat> and uh, that he preached, I preached. Some of you say you're of him. Some of you say of me. It's a, what are you talking about? We both preach Jesus. Yes. And that's the key. Amen. So today's our receiving day. Now the book of Revelation. <clears throat> oh, this book. Mm, mm, mm. This is a delicious book. Praise God. Now, right here um, in the uh, second chapter, I want, to, I want you to see the phrase in the seventh verse. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Now, come down here to the 13th verse. I know your works. Now, now, listen to this. Where you dwell, even where Satan's seat is. Well, now you just need to do some study about that because these are real places. These are real places on earth. Where Satan's seat is, you hold fast my name and has not denied my faith, even in the days when Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you, where Satan dwells. 
All right. Now, uh, the, he just kept saying that, to he that overcomes, to he that overcomes, to he that overcomes, to he that overcomes. Oh, look at 321. Look at it and shout. To him that overcomes, will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my Father in his throne, he that has an ear to let him hear what the Spirit has to say. And I got hold of that a long time ago, and the Spirit had to say it in my life. <laughs> Glory to God, man. Amen. Amen. This, uh, this church in Pergamos where he's talking about the, where Satan's seed is, if you do a little study of that, get Rick Renner's stuff on it, boy. He's, he, he breaks that down. They had every kind of perversion. Those people were under terrible strain. But in verse 26 of chapter 2, it says, uh, well, let's go to verse 25, but that which you have already hold fast till I come, 26, and he that overcometh and keepeth my works Unto the end, to him will I give power, power over, over the, the nations, nations, including that seat that Satan's trying to hold. Yeah, I'm going to give you power uh, I'll because show you. his eternal ending is right here in this book. It is. Let's let's look at it in uh, chapter four of Revelation and verse. Go down here to verse eleven. This oh, is where yeah. the four and twenty oh, elders yeah. fall down before him. Oh yes. Uh, thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For this ties us to Genesis 1. Yes. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure are they were created. Praise God. Everything here was made for his pleasure, including you and I. Yes. yes. Every single thing. Yes. And he's not going to lose. Well, the Apostle Paul wrote that to Timothy. Hmm. And he said, now, and, and it's a loaded question, and I, but, I, he, you know, the apostle wrote in Philippians, my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches in glory. Well, uh, it's a good question. Then uh, does, he, does he do that just to supply my needs? No, because he wrote to Timothy and said, those that be rich in this world exhort them to distribute. For God gives us all things richly to enjoy. That's right. And Gloria and I started out we wrecked our good car, but it had, it wasn't nearly worn out. It was a good car, but, and the one, I came about that, that Oldsmobile, and I, I, I kind of a left-handed airplane swap and a deal, and it had 90,000 miles on it when I got it. And it was a glorious car. <laughs> but, but we came to the place where we enjoyed it because of the miracle that God did on it. I drove that car. <laughs> I dro drove it from Tulsa to Lubbock, Texas, where I was born. But it's a long ways across there. Yes, sir. Listening to Brother Hagin's tapes, big grocery sack full of those old carbon batteries, the big fat ones, and, and listening to tapes in my car. Driving across there, driving across there holding this thing around 40 miles an hour. And I heard Brother Hagin preaching. I thought, oh, listen, faith will hold this thing together. Well, I learned something out of that. Well, then they got home. We drove into Fort Worth again to preach at Grace Temple Church. And a young man and uh, his wife went to Grace Temple and he was a mechanic. He said, uh, Brother Copeland, how about I tune your car for you while you're here? I thought, boy, that's a good deal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> and he said, uh, where is it? I said, well, it's over there at my dad's house. And because 
you know, after I, we got there, as quick as I could, I started driving Dad's car. <laughs> he said, I'll go over there and get it and tune it. And now he that hath ears to hear, listen. So he brought it back. And uh, at church that night, he said, did you drive that car in there? I said, yes, I did. Uh, he said, I couldn't start it. I said, it was running great when I drove it in there. He said, it couldn't have been. I said, Jim, what are you talking about? Now, those of you that are non-mechanic, the points, this is a little stainless steel paddle that has little carbon points in the distributor. And this thing swings around to the different points and sends fire to the different plugs. And there's eight spark plugs in that car and, uh, and it's sending fire to the different ones. He said, I towed it to my house. He said, when I got in there, there were no points. He said, it was a slick paddle. It drove great. I know it didn't the last point slick off when I drove in the driveway. <laughs> it was a miracle car. Yes. I enjoyed that. It was being held together. He held it together because I was on a mission. Gloria and I were on a mission to go preach. <clears throat> and that's what he told me driving back from Lubbock. He had a faith built in me, listening to Brother Hagin. <clears throat> and I, and I, it came, I said it out loud. I said, why? Wow, I'm driving 40 miles an hour. I said, well, you can hold this thing together at 50, 60 miles an hour, the same as you can 40. And he rose up on them inside of me and he said, yes, that's right. But with the moment you go over that speed limit, you're out of my hands. Mm. Because when you got your driver's license, you, you signed it, signed it yep. that you will obey the law. And I drove too fast all the time. I learned right then. Now, you, this is a way you don't get speeding tickets. Simplest thing, you don't need a little radar up there so you, so you can <laughs> lie <laughs> until the police come. Beep, 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 beep. Oh, <laughs> I had one once. Uh, no, everybody did. <laughs> I had one. <laughs> I was standing, I was watching a policeman. He had his radar gun, and I saw. I, I enjoyed that. I just stopped. And here came this old, worn-out, great big Buick. Came around the corner and saw that radar set, and that old car went. Whoa! <laughs> and that policeman laughed and he said, he thinks I'm dumb enough <laughs> that I don't know what he's doing. So he stopped him, he walked over there and he got to laughing and he didn't give him a ticket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but faith worked and I learned a, a lesson of obedience that day. And then that continued then from then, the, each car was a better car. And then we, then finally we had money enough to get Gloria a good car. And then they became better cars. And eventually they became new cars. And, right. But that's the way it worked. But it, it, it happened when you said that. Yes. You're listening to the tapes. And another thing, that's when he said to me, you clean that car up. Mm. You treat it like it's brand new. Well, it became then a faith car. Yeah. I found a really, really, really nice Buick that had 14,000 miles on it. And I got $235 trade-in on my car. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> it wasn't worth $235. Scrap metal wasn't worth that much. No. <laughs> But that's, you, you hit a point right there 
God didn't give you, bless you, provide this for you, for you to be able to, it's not your second bedroom, that car. It's not your garage. Hey, oh, the Lord's done that with me. Yes. Excuse me. That's not your second bedroom. That's not your, and I, I really had to struggle with that one. Because here's the thing, you didn't set off to say, now I listen to Brother Hagen here and I'm gonna use my faith. You just said that and you put it into motion. Uh -huh, that's right. And a lot of people don't realize what you say, you're putting it into motion. Now you mixed faith with it when you said he's holding this thing together. I would get so irritated with that car. Uh, and it, it hurt me because Gloria was having to drive junk. I've been there. But don't ever curse that car, right. you sorry piece of trash. Don't ever do that. No, the Lord may call on you to sow it. Mm -hmm. That's not when you clean it up. That's when you polish it really good. You keep it clean all the time. Yes, right. If the kids mess it up in the back, say, all right, now you kids mess this up. You're going to help me clean it up. And I'm going to teach you how to wash it. And we're going to get out here together and wash this. And then you get the kids out there washing it and squirt them with water and have a good yes. time at washing the thing. And everybody laugh, but they learn how to wash the car. This is how you check the oil. This is how you... Greg. <laughs> put air in the tires. Kelly got her first car. Oh, she was so thrilled she got rid of that bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, all right, young lady, <clears throat> where's the handbook on it? The what? This, this is life's handbook. I said, where's the handbook on that car? I don't know. I said, what? It's right here. I opened the glove box. It was packaged up. I said, I said, get that out. We're going to read it. We have to read that. I said, oh, yeah. <laughs> so we read all the way down. I said, okay. Where in there does it tell you how to change the tire? What do I need to know that for? Because you need to know how to change it in case of emergencies. Right. So I got out there with her. I said, all right, young lady, open the trunk. So she opened the trunk. I said, there's your spare. See it? Yeah. I said, get it out. What? <laughs> Read the book and find out how to get it out. Right. So she, then there, she just sat down and started reading it. And I said, what is this? Oh, okay, yeah. that's how you undo that. Okay, we did all that. I had her jack that car up changed the tire, put the other tire in the trunk. Then I had her take that tire out of the trunk and, and put it back on there mm -hmm. and operate the jack and everything. I said, now, Kelly, what have you just done? Well, I said, you read the book yeah. and you learned how to take care of yourself in an emergency by yourself. That's what this book is all about. Amen. Amen. So it was a Bible lesson and it, she never forgot it. Right. Well, I didn't have to do that with John because he's mechanically minded, but I did go through the book. That's right. I said, now, John, don't try to figure this stuff out on your own. You'll tear up more than you fix. Get the book out and read it. Right. And I was always a book reader guy. Mm -hmm. And I got a new navigation piece of equipment, an airplane one time. And I was so, and I was going to fly it from the installation place to Fort Worth. So I got that book out and I, I read through the first part of it. And the first part of that manual said, we know you're, you're in a hurry to get home. <laughs> so, <laughs> so here was the quick start. Yeah. So I flew that day with that book right there in my lap. Instead of saying, well, maybe this will work. Maybe that'll work. Don't try that with this either. 
Maybe this will work. Maybe that'll work. Read it. Believe it. Say it. Say it. You can't. You must not. Try to read a Ford manual driving a Chevrolet. That's right. That doesn't work. Yeah, but I like this better. I don't care what you like. <laughs> the manufacturer wrote the book on the Chevrolet. The Ford Motor Company wrote the book on the Ford. Yes. So don't use either one of them when you drive a Toyota. Go get the Toyota book. It's the manufacturer's handbook. This, this, this is what I'm this, this is. getting over. That's what this is. Yes. He made it. Yes. He created all things. Yes. And he wrote the book. <laughs> he created you and he created me and he laid out a plan for us. Gloria and I were talking about it last night. I, I said, Gloria, uh, you know, the Lord needed I knew, n knew that I needed you before I was born. He knew that I was going to need somebody to hold me together. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, he did. We used to sing that song, Oh, Lord, send the power just now. I oh, remember. I made that mistake too. And, oh, Lord, send that. No, he's already done that. Let me show you as we go today, the end of the book here, toward the end of the book in Revelation chapter 12, mm. verse 10. Oh, all wait a minute. Things, I want to see it with my face. All the things you're going through, all the things that yes. the government's doing. And I heard yes. a loud voice saying in heaven, now what is come. What kind of a voice? A loud a voice. A loud voice. <laughs> saying in heaven, now, now is come, come salvation, salvation and strength, strength. The kingdom, kingdom of, of our, our God, God and the power of his Christ. Now go look at the last, next line. The next line. For the accuser of the brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word yes. of their, their testimony. testimony. Yes. And they love not their lives unto death. Therefore rejoice. There it is. <laughs> oh, there it is. There it is. Dear. This is the word of his testimony. Yes, it is. Yes, Learn the handbook. Get in the handbook. Yes. Find out what he says about you. Yes. You Lord are the power God. of his Christ. Yes. <laughs> I said that. Oh, Lord, send the power just yeah. now. Yeah. And he said, where am I going to get it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It rose up on the inside of me. I knew, I, I, I knew it when I said it. I, he said, Kenneth, there's no one I can say. Kenneth needs more power. <laughs> he said, I filled you with myself. Yes. That's when he oh. said, I could have filled you with an angel. Mm. He said, what do you think a demon possessed is? Man. He said, I, I, he said, I could have filled you with a great angel, but I did not trust you to anyone but myself. Oh my. Isn't that good? Well, you were oh. created in the image. I just sat there and laughed and shook all over. Yes, he's in me. Yes. My hope of glory, he's in me. The power, the same power that mm. raised him from the dead, pulled him out of hell is in me. I don't care about this little devil guy. I mean, I know what he is. I know he's got power, but he doesn't have this power. No, he doesn't. He doesn't have resurrection power. And after Jesus got through with him, he took his keys away from him in hell. Yes, he did. The keys to death, yes, he did. the keys to the grave, yes. keys to grief. He, he, he took it. So that's why we resist him. He doesn't have yes. it. We just resist. The only power he him. has is what you'll give him. That's it. Through fear. Uh, and I, 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 let, me, let me say this. this. This really set me back. I had to meditate on this for a while, but oh, we're out of time. I'll do it again tomorrow. And uh, we, uh, well, we'll be back. In a I'll come bit. back. <laughs> right, come, let's give the Lord a praise. People can go through life feeling powerless and unable to withstand the storms that come their way. But God has given every born-again believer authority over the enemy and the power to overcome. In fact, Jesus made it clear 
that having the Holy Spirit is crucial for those who follow Him. Discover how God wants to fill you with His power, with the Holy Spirit, an audio teaching by Kenneth Copeland. Everything you have need of, God can meet. The Bible says greater is He who is in you than he who is in the world. The very power of God is the Holy Spirit. Learn how to receive revelation, knowledge, and find victory with the help of the Holy Spirit. He is your intercessor, comforter, and guide who promises to lead you into all truth. Realize the power of God that's inside of you. Be filled with the Holy Spirit and step into the destiny God has for you. The Holy Spirit in you is your intercessor, standby, comforter, teacher, and friend. Learn how to be led by the power of the Spirit within you. Request your free copy of Kenneth Copeland's MP3 series, The Holy Spirit, on kcm.org slash TV special, or when you call 800-600-7395. Offer is good for 60 days. If you're outside the United States, shipping charges may apply. Contact your regional office for more information. Welcome to KCM.org, your study center for victory. Stay focused on truth by reading the devotional from faith to faith and the one-year Bible plan every day. Keep up with culturally relevant articles and free downloads on the blog. Click through interactive issues of the BVOP magazine with links to videos and further reading. Follow along with the question of the day. Face tough questions with answers based firmly on the Bible. Get a faith boost by reading testimonies of real-life success stories from people just like you. KCM.org meets you where you are. Join Kenneth Copeland at these upcoming KCM events. August 1 through 6, bring your whole family to the Southwest Believers Convention in Fort Worth, Texas. October 27 through 29, come to the Omaha Victory Campaign in Nebraska. And November 10 through 12, join Kenneth Copeland at the Washington, D.C. Victory Campaign in Woodbridge, Virginia. KCM events are free to attend. Go to kcm.org slash events for more information and we'll see you there. Are you having as much fun at this as we are? I know you are, so uh, be with us again tomorrow. And hey, push the record button, all right? I mean, record it. You may want to, your DVR, you may want to go back through these over and over, or you can do that online. And uh, until then, this is Kenneth Copeland, Greg Stevens, and the entire class reminding you that God loves you, and we love you, and Jesus is Lord. So give the Lord God another praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, amen. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Watch the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast free on kcm.org or KCM's Roku channel. If you would like a free copy of the broadcast to put into your faith library, you can download it on kcm.org or request it on DVD or CD. Keep your heart full of the Word of God and continue to grow in faith. Every believer has a voice, and it is the voice of victory.